Anything new? Yeah, I've been working on it. Oh, yeah? Getting a few things done. Yeah? You want to point it out to us, what you've done? Yeah, I installed this bracket. It supports the brake pedal assembly. I've also installed the master cylinder and brake booster. Master the cylinder. Steering column. Steering wheel. Wow. And a shifter. I made up a mock-up of the dash. This probably isn't the one that I'm going to use, but uh, that's basically what it's going to look like. Okay. And so you said the pedals also? Yeah. Brake pedal, gas pedal. Wow. Uh, master cylinder and brake booster are from the C5 Corvette. Okay. Along with uh, the gas pedal, which is electronic, it's just fly-by wires. Uh, there's a motor on the injectors. And as you push down on the gas pedal, it opens up the injection. Okay. Is that is that special? It's it's pretty much standard on uh, C5 through C8 Corvettes. So does that mean that you don't have to put the pedal all the way to the floor? It'll I don't know. No, what that means <laughs> is there's not a cable running back to the injectors. Okay. It's operated by electronics. Okay. Uh, let me see. I started fitting the rear clip and I made up this uh, interior piece. Since the original race car didn't have a rear window. Oh, it didn't have a rear window? No. So Why does yours have a rear window? Well, it's going to be a street car, so uh, I might need to look out the rear mirror. <laughs> right. Huh. So, yeah, so there'll be a piece of glass here. Uh, the original race car just had the rear clip. So it would go on and off. Uh huh. Uh, since I'm making this street cable, I'm going to occasionally have to do minor you know, things to the engine. You know, check the oil, water, all that. So again, the original car had just a rear clip. I was. It was all one piece. Yeah, I made up a. And wow. It opens up. So there's access to the engine for, again, checking oil, things like that. Well, that's pretty cool. Huh. So you just thought of everything, didn't you? Well, make it user friendly. <laughs> Looks good. It's really coming along. This thing is going to be sweet. I can't believe how much you've done already. So the windshield, that has to be custom made, correct? Yes. What makes it so special? Well, to make the car street legal, it has to be safety glass. From people I've talked to, they never made a safety glass windshield for the Nissan because it was a race car. Okay. Is it the shape of it that makes it or so? Well, yeah. Uh, look over here. This is the cabin section. So 
That's what the windshield has to be shaped to fit. Okay. And then you said this is about to get primed? Yes. So that, in a few days, once it's primed, will be mounted onto the front of the car. And then it'll be looking more and more like a car. How long do you think until the doors go on? Or are the doors going to be one of the last steps? Probably one of the last things. Okay. You know, because, you know, I'm going to have to get in and out of the car a lot while I'm doing wiring and interior panels yeah so would it have been easier to just make the car the original way how the original one was rather than doing all of the modifications to make it street legal well uh, the car's going to be more comfortable right this way be air conditioned uh, it'll also have power steering and power brakes. Um, the race car didn't have anything on it that it didn't need to get around the racetrack fast. Okay. So the idea behind this is make it a little more comfortable, a little more convenient to drive, and again, you know, the race car was harsh. It was made to get around the racetrack as fast as possible. What do you mean harsh? Well, it was stiffly sprung. Okay. Uh, there was no sound deadening material in the car. Okay. So what is your sound barrier? Well, like I haven't installed it yet, but before the interior pieces go in, I use a product called Dynamat. Okay. It insulates the car sound and uh, heat, cold. Okay. All right. So that the car was harsh, and yours is not going to be as harsh. Yours is going to be, I mean, is it going to be like? It won't be like a new Cadillac. Okay. Uh, it probably won't be like a new Corvette. Right. But it will be more comfortable than... Than the most hot rods out there. Right. More as comfortable. So, did you make your job harder by doing all of these modifications? Uh, I don't know if I made it harder. I made it more convenient. Okay. I made it so that it's not going to be a pain in a the pain butt to drive. To drive. Yeah. I'm trying to make it as pleasant to drive as right. possible, but still fun. What the look? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. So I was reading last night. I was on the C1 and C2 Grand Sport Forum online yeah. and I came across something that said that there were two identical Grand Sport Corvettes that you built two or two wait I don't two matching matching uh, D&D Corvettes that you built right. so why would there be two identical ones because you never did that okay what had happened was I was building a car for uh, a guy over in Pennsylvania. And Kick Car Illustrated's run and gun was coming up. I didn't have a car to take to that race. So I asked the customer if I could borrow his car to go to the run and gun. Wait, you, you were in the middle of building it or you had already built it? Yeah, it was basically done. Okay. <laughs> so uh, he said, yeah, you know, if you wreck it, whatever, you have to fix it. So 
So anyways, this was out in Phoenix. Uh, I borrowed my father-in-law's truck. I didn't think my truck would make it. Poppy's? Yes. You borrowed Poppy's truck? Yeah. Poppy loved that truck, didn't he? <laughs> Not as much when I was done with it. <laughs> Anyway, I go out to the race. Well, I, I stopped first at uh, a friend's in uh, Austin, Texas. We took the car to a track near him, just basically to give it a shakedown, make sure everything was good. Well, in the process, something let loose in the engine. Oh, no. So, he had a spare engine. <laughs> he just happened to have a spare engine. Yeah, yeah, he's a racer too. I mean, you know, these guys have stuff like that laying around all the time. So uh, he said, "Yeah, you know, you can borrow the engine." So in his driveway, I proceeded to pull my engine out, put his in, and while this was going on. Uh, a friend of his stopped over, fell in love with the car, <laughs> and you know, asked me if it was for sale. And I said, no, I don't think so. I said, I borrowed it from a friend. <laughs> so anyway, we go out to the race, and uh, uh, you know, we raced that weekend, and the night before I was leaving to to head back, he called me at my motel and said, I really want to buy that car. So we worked out a deal. I called up the customer that owned the car and I said, I've got somebody that wants to buy this. You know, would you mind if I sold it and built you another one? And he said, no, that's okay, go ahead. <laughs> so made arrangements to bring the car to him in Austin. But on the way back from Phoenix, I think I got to El Paso, the truck broke down. Oh no, not Poppy's truck. Poppy's truck. Wait a minute, did Poppy know? Yeah, didn't Poppy call you every day? How's my truck? How's my truck doing? Doing great, <laughs> doing great. So, <laughs> Anyway, I unloaded the car at the, uh, I think it was a truck repair center. Pulled the car, the race car, off of the trailer and it didn't have any plates on it or anything. So I called one of the guys back at my shop and I said, what's the license plate number on my 80 Corvette? <laughs> he told me. I took a piece of cardboard, <laughs> wrote the license number <laughs> on it, and underneath of it, I wrote lost plate. <laughs> and proceeded to drive the car to Austin. Oh my gosh. So how far was that? It was very far. They, so how did it hold up? How did that little license, how did that cardboard license plate hold up? Well, I pulled into a gas station uh, to get gas and an unmarked police car pulled in behind me <laughs> and asked me to explain the license plate. Well, I told him, I said, I own D and D Corvette, I told him the story about the truck breaking down, I've got the car sold and uh, I lost the license plate. And he said, you know, he knew about D and D Corvette. Well, he knew about just a random police officer out in Texas somewhere. Texas, yeah. He knew about it. Yeah. How? I, you know, I should have spent more time talking to him. I did. I don't know who he was or whatever. So anyway, I told him the story, and he seemed pretty enthusiastic about everything. <laughs> Handed me a card. And he told me, he says, if you have any problems, just show him this card. I said, okay. 
So anyway, I'm up in the hills, you know, driving the car, having a good time, <laughs> maybe exceeding the speed limit on occasion. Uh, and then I pull into this little town, and there's two police cars aimed at me, <laughs> motioned me to the side of the road, and said that uh, there was a, a police car behind me up on the highway, and said I was driving recklessly. Were you? I don't think recklessly. Maybe I was driving fast. Okay. But, uh, so... You were just having fun. Yeah, I was having fun. Okay. Okay. Wasn't hurting anybody. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Car was running great. Uh, having a good time. <laughs> so, I handed one of the policemen that card that that guy had given me. And I thought, I'm probably in big trouble. <laughs> But he goes back, gets on his radio, about 10 minutes later he comes up, hands me the card back, and says, have a nice day. Jeez. I don't know who that first policeman was, but... How, yeah, how far out from town, from where that, that was? Like, how far away were you from that, where you ran into that first officer? Oh, Texas is very big. Yeah. I drove all day, and... I still wasn't anywhere near Austin, <laughs> so I don't know. Wow. It was probably six, seven hundred miles. Wow. So anyway, got in the car and proceeded to drive to Austin. I got in there, it was kind of late evening. Uh, the buyer of the car was all excited, told him the story, and uh, Told him I needed to buy a truck. <laughs> <laughs> to get home. Yeah. I need a truck to get home. <laughs> he said, if you want to, you can stay at my place until you find a truck. Well, I'll tell you what, nobody in Texas wants to sell their truck. <laughs> Luckily, I found a guy whose son had just joined the Army, and he asked him you know, to sell his truck while he was in the Army. That was the gold one? Yes. That was a nice truck. Yeah. So, bought the truck, <laughs> and, uh, you know, took about three or four days to find it. Wow. So, with the new truck, I drove back to El Paso, where I left the, my father-in-law's truck and my trailer, loaded up his truck onto the trailer, Hooked it up to the new truck that I just bought. Drove back to <laughs> Akron. Oh my gosh. So when I got back here, I had to build another car exactly like the first one. What made it, which car was that? Do you happen to know? It was a white Roadster uh, Blue Stripe. Okay, Conver Okay, I know exactly which one you're talking about. I have a picture of you standing next to that one. Yeah, which one was it? <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah, which one, which car was it? Okay, so oh. uh, the guy in uh, Texas kept that car for a, a number of years and then sold it to somebody in Copenhagen who vintage races it. Where's Copenhagen? Over Europe. Oh, really? Do you know? Do you remember the guy's name that you sold it to? No. You know, a lot of people know the names of the people that own your cars. Yeah. Because they refer to it. Is that so and so's car? Is that so and so's car? So. Yeah. But, so then I built the car for the guy over in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Who I think kept it for a year or so and then sold it. So there. The guy I built the car for, he wanted his name put on the car as the driver. He had his buddy's name that did uh, his mechanical work put on it. So that's on both cars. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. It is? Yeah. <laughs> uh, everything was identical. So there's two cars out there that have this driver's name, this mechanic's name. That's really cool. What about 
the VIN know. number. Did, does it have a different VIN number? Oh yeah, different VIN number. So identical card, just different VIN numbers. Yeah. Okay. So that's why there's two cars that are exactly the same. That's a nice car. Was that the only, well, those two, were those the only two white roadsters that you had done? I believe so. Yeah. Well, that was a fun story. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. That's why, if anybody wants to know why there's two of them, that's why there's two. <laughs> okay, well, I want to thank everybody for watching my videos. And I want to let you know that we're going to keep doing them until this car is able to be driven out of here. And hopefully some track time will be shown.